Hello everybody, my name is Gage Williams, and today we are tackling the second track in our quest to defeat every Oxide Ghost. Today we are going to Roost Tubes. I hope that didn't pick up on the microphone, I need to wipe some off my screen. I'm very nitpicky about the cleanliness of my electronics. I mean, I'm not too much of a neat freak otherwise, but I'm going way off topic here. We are at Roost Tubes. Yes, that's this is a video about CTR, I forgot. Um, Roost Tubes. It is probably my second favorite track in the game for time trial purposes, and because of that, this video might not be too accurate as to the difficulty of Ice Oxide's Ghost because I have way too much experience playing this track. But I do genuinely believe that Oxide's Ghost is not too bad to take down if you follow a few key tricks. For one, uh, you have to take this shortcut. Well, not this one. That was me trying to take that one, because I know you can get behind those mushrooms, but I am just absolutely terrible at doing so. It doesn't shave that much time off, so it's not completely necessary, but cutting across the dirt, in general, regardless of if you go in front of or behind the mushrooms, you need to do it, otherwise you don't really stand a chance. I mean, that's something I guess I'm gonna have to test, but I'm pretty sure that the... that there's just no way you're gonna beat him if you don't do that. Um, as for tips, what I really like about Bruce Tubes is the way the turns flow into each other. Uh, it's not like snaking, where you can drift endlessly by going on straightaways, because the track is wide, and the track is very wide, which is a pretty good design standpoint, but, I mean, just look at all these just gentle snakebacks and switchbacks and whatnot. I mean, it, it flows together very nicely. And then you have these elevation changes, which are always fun to play, and you have more just switchbacks here, and they're real gradual switchbacks. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a it's a, it's a fun track. In terms of design standpoint, from as far as tracks go, it would probably be my favorite, but it falls to number two for me due to a combination of for the other track that I like, which as a spoiler is Mystery Caves. Um, I like the design of that track, and the music is just so phenomenal there. It never gets old for me. And those two add up, because I am I am a music nut, as you might have noticed with my VVV, VVV Let's Play. I'm a music nut when it comes to gaming soundtracks. I, you know, Mystery Caves is one of my favorite tracks of just about any game. And I just failed to really give any good advice for bruise tubes there, but that's okay. We're going through this three times, even though I've already beaten Oxide coming into this, as you probably noticed. This was one of my testing footage. By the way, speaking of testing, I have gotten rid of, uh, what's it called? The skipping, the frame skipping, because I found out how to make a, an image file off of the disc directly so that my CD player doesn't have to try and keep up with the recording and the emulator and yada yada tech talk uh, you won't have to worry about skipping anymore is basically what I'm getting at and that's always good better video quality is always nice I do not like putting out things that are of low quality but sometimes it can't be helped and here this is good advice to just know when you've lost a run I got a little bit overzealous there bumped the wall went flying back straight into the obstacle and just completely stopped I knew that my run was over, and that's one thing that you're going to learn as you do more and more time trials, is when to recognize that a run is just done. That there's no way that you're going to beat whatever marker that you set up. I mean, time trials are pretty much about perfection, if you really start to take them seriously. Like, even there, if I was really going for the most perfect score possible, I would have reset already because of that slight bump in the wall I made earlier. But I'm not going for ultimate perfection, I'm just going to beat Oxide, because that's the point of this video. I mean, I want to get the best time possible, but I recognize that I have a bit of leeway. So, Ruse Tubes. Ruse? Ruse Tubes. I can pronounce this, I promise. You'll notice right there was one of the biggest advice points I can give. Do not jump down that large uh, downhill slope. The hang time boost is not worth it. If you can just drift through it with all three of your power slide boosts, instead of bouncing, just do that instead, like I did there. It is faster. I mean, the hang time boosts in this game, they were meant to be a good incentive to take a lot of jumps and whatnot, but often it is just faster if you're already in the middle of drifting to just finish out your drift. I mean, the boost you get is just better than the boost you get from jumping. And you move faster on the ground than you do in the air. I mean, the 
it's it's pretty simple. Another thing you probably noticed way earlier was that I did not give up on this run, even though I collided with an obstacle and basically came to just about a dead halt in the middle of the dirt, because this is an easy ghost. I mean, in comparison to the rest of the Oxide Ghosts, this is one of the easiest you are going to face. I think the easiest overall that just requires a basic understanding of snaking is Coco Park, which we are going to be getting at in a few videos, but Coco Park and Bruce Toots are probably the two easiest ghosts in the game. I mean, they just, they are really, they are not that difficult to take down. They are very forgiving. Coco Park's probably even easier because you don't even have to take a shortcut. Um, another thing, like I mentioned way earlier, you have to take this dirt shortcut. I mean, there's no reason not to. One of the things in CTR is if you are drifting fast enough, cutting through the terrain, it doesn't hinder you that much, depending on how much terrain you're cutting through. As long as you're drifting and piling off those boosts, and you already had boosts going into it, it's, it's going to be good. I mean, there's not much reason, and one of the main tracks that you're going to see this at near the end of the series, we're going to be using that a lot, but hush hush, no spoilers, I already spoiled a few things in this video. Um, another thing with this first turn, be careful of taking that first turn that I just passed too early. If you take it too early, you won't get all three boosts off because you'll risk hitting the wall, or you will hit the wall, because the downhill incline makes your drift tighten up a little bit, depending on the angle, and that was a really steep down decline, so, you know. And as you might notice, this is a very good run of mine. I was really upset with my previous uh, two runs. I wanted something really good to show off, and I got it. And especially that first lap, 27 flat. I love getting any time that's flat. It just looks nice to see that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Join me in the next video as we tackle, I think it's Tiger Temple. Thank you all for watching. Tune in next time.